divides the North. North and South developed different ways of life after the Revolutionary War. The North developed into an industrial region, while the South remained agriculturally based. Slavery ended early in the North, but by the 1800s the North had about 50,000 slaves enslaved, compared to the South's almost a million. In the 1860s, 18 slaves in New Jersey, but otherwise there were no slaves in the North. Many Southerners believed that Africans were meant to be slaves, and the Compromise of 1850 enacts the Fugitive Slave Act, which required the Northerners to help capture slaves. This enraged many Northerners. Uh, later on, Bleeding Kansas was a fight between pro-slavery and abolitionists caused as many small conflicts in Kansas, which was just becoming a state. Uh, Lincoln then became president soon afterwards, and due to the fact that he won the presidency without a single southern state's vote, the southerners felt that their opinion wasn't needed, and so left the Union. Slavery divides... Fort Sumter, April 12th through the 14th, 1861. As tension rose between northern and southern Americans, Lincoln decided to take action. Because of the geographical locations of certain forts, Fort Sumter was very important to the Union. Fort Sumter guarded the Charleston Harbor off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina. Upon taking office, Lincoln had decided whether to take the risk required to hold on to these forts or to yield to Confederate demands. South Carolinians were suspicious of Lincoln's motives and ordered Union troops to surrender. After Union troops put up a fight and ran out of ammunition, they were forced to surrender. After the attack on Fort Sumter, Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina joined the Confederacy. Because of the urgency, the North and South were unable to properly equip and train their soldiers. The Battle of Bull Run, July 21, 1861. In July of 1861, Union General Winfield Scott sent General Irvin McDowell and more than 30,000 Union troops to face Confederate forces waiting outside Washington, D.C. These two armies met at Bull Run a creek located near Manassas, Virginia. In the battle's early hours, Union troops gained the upper hand. Unfortunately, unfortunately for the Union, a determined stand led by Confederate General Thomas J. Jackson sent them retreating to Washington. Confederate troops nicknamed him Stonewall Jackson for his defense against the Union. The Battle of Shiloh, April 6 and April 7, 1862. On the morning of April 6, 1862, 40,000 Confederate soldiers under the command of General Albert Sidney Johnson poured out of the nearby woods and struck a line of Union soldiers occupying ground near Pittsburgh Landing on the Tennessee River. The overpowering Confederate offensive drove the unprepared Federal troops from their camps and threatened to overwhelm Ulysses S. Grant's entire command. Some Union troops made determined stands, and by afternoon they had established a battle line at the sunken road known as the Hornet's Nest. Repeated Confederate attacks failed to carry the Hornet's Nest, but mass artillery helped to turn the tide as Confederates surrounded the Union troops and captured, killed, or wounded most. During the first day's attacks, General Johnson was mortally wounded. The Battle of Antietam, September 16th through the 18th, 1862. The Army of the Potomac, under the command of George McClellan, mounted a series of powerful assaults against Robert E. Lee's forces near Sharpsburg, Maryland, on September 17, 1860. The Battle of Chancellorsville, April 30th to May 6, 1863. It resulted in a Confederate victory that stopped an attempted flanking movement by General Joseph Fighting Joe Hooker's Army of Northern Virginia. The Southern victory was diminished by the loss of Lieutenant General Thomas Stonewall Jackson, mortally wounded by his own men who mistook him and his staff for Union cavalry, a loss that would have far-reaching effects on the Civil War. The Battle of Gettysburg was fought July 1st to 3rd, 1863 in Pennsylvania. This battle involved the largest number of casualties of the entire war and is often considered the war's turning point. Union Major George Meade's Army of the Potomac defeated attacks by Confederate General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia, ending Lee's attempt to invade the North. The Siege of Vicksburg was the final major military action of the American Civil War. 
Union Major General Ulysses S. Grant and his Army of the Tennessee crossed the Mississippi River and drove the Confederate Army of Vicksburg, led by Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton, into the defensive lines surrounding the city of Vicksburg. On July 4th, Vicksburg surrendered after prolonged siege operations. The Confederacy was effectively split in half. Once the war had ended, the main goal at this point was to get the seceded states back into the Union with little conflict. With Lincoln's issue of the Emancipation Proclamation in 1861 and amendments, the 13th Amendment which freed the slaves, the 14th Amendment granted birthright citizenship to freed slaves, 15th Amendment allowed free slaves to vote. The war turned in the Union's favor as slaves were now enlisting in the fight for their freedom. Joining by the 100,000 caused the South to have a large-scale revolution. Under the administration of President Andrew Johnson in 1865 and 66, passed restrictive black codes to control the labor of former slaves and other African Americans. Rage in the North over these codes diminished support for the presidential reconstruction approach and led to the triumph of the radical Republican Party. Johnson's brilliant thinking got him impeached, leaving the nation with the Civil Rights Act in place. Shortly after the Reconstruction Act of 1867, it divided the South the southern military into five districts and determined how they'd be organized for male suffrage. By 1870, all of the former Confederate states had been admitted to the Union, and the, state and the state constitutions during the years of Reconstruction were the most progressive in the region's history. African American, African -American participation in southern social life after 1867 would by far be the clear sign of the objective. Blacks were now going to school more often and receiving some equality. But, while well, in the South, people began to feel mistreated as they have no say about what goes on in the country. Southern whites began to grow a hatred for the African-American race, creating groups such as the KKK or the Ku Klux Klan. They targeted Republican leaders and any blacks that challenged authority. White supremacy among the South gradually took hold again with the use of racism and segregation. 